No, we're straight up gonna bring it. It's Comic Sans, okay? This is the way forward. This is the only solution. You have to do Comic Sans. Welcome to the so-called graphics design stream. Graphic design is absolutely not my passion. However, I will be doing my best to entertain you today and also provide a uh, hopefully helpful experience for anyone who's curious about my um, Google Slides graphics editing process. It's honestly really scuffed, um, but I'll do my best. If this kind of lazy educational content speaks to you, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I got a lot more where this came from. <laughs> I guess give a quick disclaimer before we go any deeper. Like, first of all, the guide that I'm about to walk y'all through, it's really intended to be sort of a low budget, low effort solution for people who aren't ready to commission fancy layouts for themselves yet. Um, I don't know anything about graphic design. Um, so just think of it as sort of like a quick start guide if you wanna get something up and running real fast that looks like minimally polished slash branded without you having to shell out like a lot of money um, to get a proper overlay. But I do hope y'all will eventually be able to commission actual graphic design artists. As fun as this is, right? I'm looking forward to being able to pay someone who's actually knows what they're doing. <laughs> this is my current slide deck for like all the graphic stuff that I did. So just to give you a sense of like how this current scene is constructed, um, this is actually just a blue overlay. You see that? So this, <laughs> this thing just kind of, it's its own thing. And I, I could bake it into the, the background if I wanted to, but sometimes I just figure out I want a different overlay. It's just keeping it flexible has been the easiest thing for me basically. So I try not to bake things into the background too much. I did put this image, so you see I'm like clicking around. This image is, is set as the background. So to do that, you just right click and you go change background. And you can choose an image if you want and I can like upload something here basically. And this background image actually, I literally went on Pexels and I think I searched like bookshelves or something. And everything on Pexels is Creative Commons license for the most part. You can read more license details here. Um, and they'll tell you about like what's allowed, how you do attribution, and here they clearly say that attribution is not required, right? So giving credit is, is appreciated, but it's never necessary. And you're also free to modify things. So that was really important for me because the image that I used um, was very much like, you can see here, especially if I delete the overlay or move it, um, it doesn't look like a photo, right? Like it looks like maybe an art piece or a mosaic of some sort. And the way I got that was by running it through, there's an app called Prisma Photo Editor. And basically it'll like artify things, right? So if I wanted to depart from the 3D realm a little bit, which is definitely what my goal was, um, you can just run your images through this processor. And to get the HD image, like usually it's a pretty low quality image. To get an HD image, um, you really want to pay for their like subscription plan, which is not too expensive. It's uh, 14, $13.99 per year. So I'm, I'm subscribed here, I'm paying them for it. So the other thing I wanna call out is this, this thing, you see that? I'm gonna move it back. <laughs> so this this little asset, these two little assets, these came from a website called The Noun Project. Um, I also do a lot of web dev work. So The Noun Project is really important because they offer you SVGs. So you can get vector graphics here that are also under a Creative Commons license. For example, I was searching for smoke, I think when I found that one. Yeah, you can see it's right here. This is the image that I was using. It's by Bern Schugel. When you click get this icon, you'll see there are two options. So you can pay for like, a royalty-free license, essentially, so that you don't need to attribute, um, and then you are able to also support the creator. Pro Download will also give you, like, you can modify things here, so I can make this, like, white on a transparent background, for example, and then if I pay the $3 royalty-free license, then I can just, like, do all my modifications and easily download it here. I'm just gonna show you, like, what I do, right? So. I go to basic download, I click continue. If I'm not buying the license, I do have to add an attribution text, right? It says you must add attribution. And then I will download it as a PNG. I'm gonna open it in Photoshop. So here on Photoshop, you may not have to run it through any kind of an image editor if you have the PowerPoint one, because PowerPoint has a lot more image editing options. So you may be able to like invert it directly in PowerPoint if you're using that. But I'm using Google Slides because I like having like instant multi-device access and also no worry of like losing your local copy or auto-saving or anything like that. So that's why I use Google Slides. What I usually do here, I often don't use black graphics. Like I just like white things. So I'm gonna switch this over. I'm gonna hit invert and then it just flips everything to white. I can just save this. I also wanna point out that all of these icons and logos that you see here, most of these also come from the Noun Project, especially like the heart, the cheers glasses, this coin thing. How do you save the presentation slides into a PNG for the stream? Oh, I have not yet. Okay, so what you do, if you wanna download this whole thing as a layout, right? You would just go into file and then hit download and you can choose a JPEG or a PNG. Something to note here, it does say PNG, doesn't it? But it doesn't, as far as I know, it doesn't preserve any um, like opacity slash transparency things. So just to show you all what it looks like when I, in this current layout that we're on, 
How I got the transparency for the overlay was ac actually, it's super scuffed. Okay, I downloaded it as a PNG. And then I'm gonna open this in Photoshop again. Okay, you ready for the super tiny brain part? <laughs> Select the magic wand and then select this black bit and then just, oh, oh, sorry, one thing, one thing I forgot to do. You wanna add a, a layer. Generally speaking, this is a locked base layer. You add a transparent layer, put it underneath, come back to your main layer and then select the black portion and just hit delete. So obviously it doesn't have to be black. It just needs to be a color that is high contrast enough with whatever border you're contrasting it against so that the magic wand tool can easily figure out uh, which parts to lasso for you automatically. Um, <laughs> that's how I got this current layout that you're looking at right now that we're all sitting on. Okay, so let's do a test run, shall we? My first test subject, I wanted to get Meeps's things up. Let's distill this down into steps, right? So for anyone, I have ADHD, I love checklists, I love ordered steps, like step one, step two, step three, right? So let's, let's do that for this guide. Step one on the graphics checklist. You wanna start with the vibe. You, you can make a Pinterest board, you can search stuff up on Pexels, um, just do research and like look for inspiration. So in this case, since we're designing for Meeps, we actually, I have asset. So, oh look, here's a fancy background, right? So we can start here. This is the vibe. Okay, I'm seeing, <laughs> that's adorable. A little penguin mug thing. That looks like a TV, penguin statues on the left, snowflakes, penguins, light blue and white are kind of the main things I'm getting out of this. So that's like the vibe we're isolating. You have that mug IRL? That's so damn nice. Um, <laughs> this adorable penguin art. Um, got this logo that Meeps made and... Wait, oh my God, the penguin put a hoodie on. That's so cute. <laughs> ah! Okay. Oh my God, I have a serious penguin problem. I freaking love penguins. I find that a lot of um, VTubers will start with their background as like the main thing. I didn't have a background, so I had to start on Pexels to get that like cafe looking background that I had here. But since Meeps has a background, we're just gonna go ahead and download this and start using it. Uh, one thing I wanna highlight as you get started on a brand new document is to go into your page setup and then it only gives you a few limited options, but if you click custom, it becomes a lot more specific. So I usually will switch this to pixels and then specifically set 1920 by 1080 apply, then the um, aspect ratio will be exactly correct when you export your screens that way. You're not accidentally gonna end up with like oh, only 1000 pixels wide image. Uh, I think this is a common mistake a lot of people make when they first start using um, Google Slides to make random things. I know a lot of people use Google Slides to make their like research posters, for example, and some people did not resize their things, so they printed out like really teeny. Step two of the graphics checklist. You wanna plan your structure or your basic layout. I would say that the important thing here is to start with the musts. Like what is the most important thing to have here? Let's actually assume this is like sort of similar layout to what you're looking at right now, which is that it's like the model and chat and then like some content. Generally speaking, you wanna make sure your content stuff is on the top left. You'll find that in most layouts, most VTubers will put their content box on the top left because um, the order of like the human eyeball when you read things. Oh. Toothpaste juice, welcome. Thank you for following. Welcome to the, welcome. I was like, welcome to the pack. I am not a wolf. So you can see from like eye tracking software and studies that people have done that most of the time the human eye will start, start in the top left. And this is probably because of like Western cultures, like normalizing reading starting in the top left and then going right and then down and then right and down and right, right? So for example, like in like older Chinese culture, you would actually start in the top right corner and read downward instead of starting in the top left and reading right. This is probably a cultural thing, but no matter what, the studies generally right now are showing that um, thankfully, I guess in the VTuber world, like we have a pretty well-defined like set layout. This is Yushan's just chatting layout, right? She had a concept of like sitting behind a tea table. So there's some layers you get, you get a sense of like dimension from it because there's tea in front of her. She's sitting in the middle. There's a background with some sort of like mid-ground elements that you get from the trees and the leaves on the side. And the reason it feels like a mid-ground element is because the background is more blurred out than the, the leaves. And so um, that sort of focal depth feeling is what's creating the sense of dimension. Um, similarly, you have a bit of opacity set on the chat, the follow, the sub, the donations, and then there's like a sort of sub goal thing on the top left. So this is a, a good example of like, start with the things that matter the most and think a lot about how you can use opacities and blurs to create a sense of dimension and layers. So um, if you want to, some people work really well on pen and paper. You can super just take a piece of paper, right? And like just draw some boxes out. Um, in the design world, that would be called wireframing. This is an example of a, of 
like elements that would go into a wireframe. You can see it's literally just boxes and lines. Obviously they have some like cool textural elements going on here, but you can just draw some boxes on a sheet of paper and get a good sense of like how you want your layout to be structured and where everything's gonna live and how much space is in between everything, for example. Um, just, to, just to give yourself a sense of direction, right? So I'm speaking again, as somebody with ADHD, <laughs> the hardest part is getting started. And so having a sketch out on paper gives me a sense of direction. So I can actually start filling things in instead of just struggling and like staring at, like I can spend hours just staring at a blank slide like this and being like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, I don't know where to start. Oh my God, oh no, oh no, I don't know what to do, right? But if I just start with, okay, I'm gonna throw on a background. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put these like a chat box in and like a main content thing in. Staring at this, I already feel a lot better, right? Like I, okay, well now I can start filling in the gaps. So there's another thing here is that generally speaking, most of the time, the content that you're streaming has specific aspect ratios. So something to keep in mind here is that you may want to set the ratio to match here. And then if you lock the aspect ratio, then you'll know for sure that for generally speaking, all of your, um, no matter what you do to it, will always remain in a 16 by nine ratio. So like, I can't like, no matter what I do. Ooh, that's a lie. Why didn't it lock it? You lied. Okay, well, drag the corner then. If you drag the corner, it'll stay in a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And if you change any of the width or height, whatever, it'll scale the other factor to match, right? Another thing I love about using slides software in general, so like it doesn't have to be um, Google Slides, right? You can be using PowerPoint, but I love that the grid snapping is like super clean for the most part. Um, so something to consider when you're, if you're looking at your thing and you feel like it's, it, it lacks a bit of oomph, something to really play with is like outlines and transparencies. So for example, um, I have a lot of like bold white lines happening here. And so this triangle over here has no outline and it's sort of a semi-transparent fill instead. This is kind of like making an outfit, y'all. So when you pick out a good outfit, right? I don't, I don't know what your processes are, but when I pick out an outfit, I like to start with like a main centerpiece is how you can think about that. Um, I start with a centerpiece and then looking at what is on that piece, like the textures, the colors, the shapes, I think about how I can best match that slash accent it. The main colors I'm picking out are actually, the blues and the whites are really obvious, but I would caution against using white as a main color, right? Because it's a really good sort of neutral, whites and blacks are really good neutral colors to put in between things or to use as fills like this. So rather than considering white a main color, I would actually consider blue the main color here. And then the accent color would actually be yellow. So another something I wanna go over, which is a main sort of principle, hold on. This is something I learned in like psychology class, okay? <laughs> so um, it's called Gestalt's Principles of Grouping. So when you think about what makes a good design good, versus a bad design, bad. <laughs> wow, language is so hard. It's a lot about how you direct the viewer's attention. So we talked a little bit about how like, oh, important things should go on the upper left-hand corner because that's sort of the F-shaped pattern of reading that a lot of humans default to. Um, similarly, how you group things will determine a lot of what, like what information is associated with what other information and it'll help direct the viewer's gaze so that the viewer always knows where their eyes are supposed to land. And that's what sort of creates a sense of order rather than chaos. Long story short, it's actually pretty self-explanatory. Like when you look, when you read these rules, you're like, oh, that, uh, that makes sense. Like I actually do that too. So like proximity, right? Things that are close to each other are groups. Things that are similar to each other are groups. Things that are closed up in some way that makes sense our groups, <laughs> things that are continuous, our groups, right? It's like, it's very obvious when you read it, but it's really something you wanna think about, right? So for example, um, this box is closed and therefore like this window, that's a group, right? This, this whole thing, I've kind of used proximity a little bit here. I like put a bunch of like similar shapes together. So this is sort of a similarity as well as proximity grouping in the chat box area. So even though there are like lots of little elements involved here, it does still feel like one cohesive group. Like you kind of know that this is two separate groups that you're looking at at the same time. So now let's choose our, uh, let's choose our details, right? Remember how I showed y'all the noun project earlier? We're gonna go back. We're gonna look for snow because Meeps has a lot of like snow imagery, right? So what I'm looking for here is um, assets that I can easily use throughout all of the layouts. Things that won't feel overwrought or too complicated. If I were to use them on literally every slide, like people wouldn't look at it and be like, that is so annoying to see all the time. In my case, I really enjoyed this, this little feather accent and these little mist accents are things that I will incorporate in like all of my layouts because I just find them like, for example, let me delete them, right? And you'll see that this layout is, it's still nice, but it really loses a touch of that 
personal charm of like Ying's branding. You'll see that no matter what I do with them, like they just, they look good. So that's, that's something to think about. Another thing to think about a lot is consistency, right? So consistency can be in color, it can be in line width, it can be in spacing. These are all things to consider to keep consistent because it'll keep things from looking too messy. Save the link so we don't lose it. Again, make sure to attribute, but for the sake of the layout, I'm gonna crop the attribution out. When you're working in slides, one of the best parts is how easy it is to copy paste things. So I do recommend you like drop all your assets on one slide just so you can always easily copy paste them over. It's just super convenient, you know? I actually think I might sort of just settle here because, so the reason being, when I wanna create transparency in the layout, I do have to, because slides does not support it, I do have to export this to Photoshop and <laughs> basically lasso out the parts I wanna make um, transparent. If I add a snowflake here, that's obviously gonna complicate all the lassoing I'm gonna have to do. So I might actually do that after the fact. So I might not do that right now. So we'll keep it simple for now. And I will also um, actually add fill here so I know that I will be deleting that shortly. Oh, so we kind of already did this step just because Meeps already has a background, right? But for most other people, you probably won't already have background art commissioned. And so if that is your situation, then you gotta add a background. Like with my background, this is what the original image looked like. By increasing the transparency, I was essentially able to reduce this into a bit more of like a texture, like an underlay texture rather than a like clear background. And the reason being that I wanted obviously the focus to be on the text. On top of that, I also added this um, ombre overlay, right? So these kinds of gradient fills will help you a lot if you feel like you need some added contrast because something that's really important to think about is how like, for example, if I move this text down here onto the lighter bits, it's harder to read because the background is so light. Like you can probably still kind of read it, but depending on your monitor, your display or your eyeballs, right? Some people are colorblind. Um, contrast is super, super important because if you don't have enough, it's just not readable. So blurs, transparencies, all of those will help you sort of reduce the prominence of the background image if it feels too loud for you. I wanna put like a little diamond. You can hold shift to keep the, the shape, keep the shape even. That's kind of what that might look like. Um, you can always change it up, obviously. That's the power of how flexible this all is. I can just hand you the slides file and you just do whatever the hell you want. I'll do that same thing for both of these here. So to change order, in case you don't know, you right click, come to order, and then bring to the front to make sure it's on top. Okay, we're going to take the Meeps handle and paste it in. Oh, a little tip. I copied some text off Twitter. If I just control V here, it pastes like with formatting, which is pretty goddamn annoying. How you can get around that is um, either with control shift V when you paste, or um, after you paste, you can, I think you can double click this and then like, clear formatting. And uh, that unfortunately just clears the formatting so it won't retain the existing formatting. So what I usually do is control shift V because um, then that'll keep the, the existing format. Okay, obviously not readable, right? What did we say earlier about contrast? All right, so that's that's basically the main layout, right? Like we're gonna put Meeps right here. Perfect, so that's Meeps' main layout. And now, so I like to start with the most complicated one just because it gets easier from here, right? So now if we want the just chatting, right? I can just duplicate the slide, delete this whole thing, move Meeps over here, and then uh, move these bad boys over. We can make chat bigger, right? Chat can take up a lot more room now. Don't forget to resize your triangles to fit also. Again, hold shift to snap and... Oh, okay, so this, this starts to happen as you have too many elements on screen. You'll see it's trying to align me with the banner on the left instead of like top aligning with the box, which is what I want it to do. In these cases, I get a little pissy, but... <laughs> I just get really annoyed. But I usually just zoom in and then it like fixes itself. There we go. Yeah, so you can see I'm getting a bit lazy here. You can resize it if you'd like. Also, because you can see that like there are color issues now, right? Like it's the white is fading into the white. So you'll want to make some adjustments as necessary. Bunk. All right, so we're, we're basically done here. Um, we may need some fine tuning, but that'll be up to whatever Meeps wants to do basically. Okay, I'm actually gonna wrap this up with um, the waiting screens. So um, I'm actually gonna show another tool I haven't done, which is literally just Google images. So we're gonna go into tools change usage rights to Creative Commons licenses, just to make sure you're using like work that is allowed for you to manipulate. And I'll usually just look for like frames or borders, just to see if there's something available. There usually isn't under the Creative Commons search. Actually, I'm gonna get kind of lazy right now because I have already done it. <laughs> just do this, why reinvent the wheel, you know? And as you can see, I played with the transparencies on the snow a little bit, because if you have varying opacities, it'll create a sense of depth and layers. So that's really important for your design to not look flat. It's a really good way to do it. So that's Meeps. Download it as a PNG. 
And we're gonna open it in Photoshop. You can use your image editor of choice. It just has to support transparencies basically. And then take your little magic wand tool. Oh, sorry, before the magic wand tool, um, add a transparent bottom layer and then come in here, take your magic wand tool. Uh oh. Okay, you see how it's selecting the, like Meeps' hoodie? Yeah, we're gonna have to, I'm sorry Meeps, you gotta, you're gonna have to go. Okay. I'm a little worried about this logo, Pango. That's another something, hold on, I'm also gonna delete that. And there we go, that was our first layout. And now let's follow these steps and um, and make another one, yeah? I'm gonna speed run Zal, yeah? Here, let's take a look at Zal's assets, okay? So here's what he provided me with. Bar background, and we've got this, oh, I love this, I love these like inky things. I actually really wanted something like this for, for myself as well. Oh, okay, and they're all separated into separate points. Okay, that's great. Ooh, stage. All right, all right. Oh, okay, all right. Look at you, looking hot with the hood and the horns. Okay, a little shaker. <laughs> it's adorable. I'm gonna do some creeping on the client. So you have a bar counter set up. Got a little chat on the wall. Oh, that's so cute. Chat on the blackboard. Your brain is so big. Oh, okay, okay. So it's all just wanted really fast, um, like trans, not transitions, but like basically these three screens for me. Um, so I'll just needed something like that. So the reason this has a bit of white spaces here is because I put a, I put a timer in there. All right, so let's create something like this for us all. We will follow my step-by-step -step guide. We'll start with a vibe, make a mood board, isolate some imagery and symbols that you want to use. Okay, so we know Saul has a background already and toss it up just so I feel like I've gotten started. The hardest part is getting started. Never forget that. All right, so what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm probably not gonna reuse this background just because Saul's already using it. So instead we're gonna come in here and we're gonna search bar. <laughs> if I'm aware that I'm about to find an image to run it through some kind of an art filter to make it look more drawn instead of photo, I will try to choose things that are simple and don't take too much, just not a whole lot going on in the scene. Right. This caught my eye immediately because it has a lot of white space for me to like do things with, right? And overall the lines and the textures I think should adapt well to the animeification, <laughs> for lack of a better term. The Prisma app that I showed y'all earlier, this only exists on the phone. Basically you would just go through the bottom and like it will generate for each of them a filter. It does take a moment, so I just run through all of them and see like what it looks like. And then I'll just choose one that fits the vibe the best basically. Ooh, that's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good too. I'm gonna hit HD. This HD feature that I just hit is, you have to pay for it basically. It's a subscription plan, but it's quite cheap. Now I got the HD, I'm gonna hit save. So this is the original image and here's the lightly filtered um, version of it just to make it look a little bit less 3D space, yeah? So obviously right now this is far too simple. In moments like this, when you're, when you're looking at things and you're like, oh, that's too simple. That's where you have to start thinking about like, what accents can I add? Perhaps there are frames that I haven't considered um, throwing in. So now is your chance to, to play with frames. Um, one way you can do that is by looking in your shapes and perhaps choosing a frame like this. Adjust things to suit your needs and just sort of like frame it like that, right? All right, um, and then I think it really comes down to the font. So now we're straight up gonna bring it as it's Comic Sans, okay? This is the way forward. This is the only solution. You have to do Comic Sans. You're not allowed to use any other font, okay? Agreed? Well, this is a pretty, this is a classy one. Look at that. For the sake of inspiration, I just wanna see what other people's look like. Please wait to be see to graphic design is my passion. <laughs> ah! Okay, we can leave it here for now. I think this is pretty easy to mess around with. I do want to add your socials in. If you want, you can add chat here on the side. I've seen some people do that. I thought it was fun. As a viewer on Twitch, I really enjoy like seeing my chat show up on the screen, but I know people feel kind of differently about how much chat should show up. Let's do something fun with the socials, yeah? So we got a champagne glass, a margarita, and a cocktail. First of all, I'm gonna save all of these references so you know what assets we used. All right, let's open these in PowerPoint. PowerPunto, not PowerPunto. We're opening it in photoshop -o. And then we're gonna take all three of these and invert it. Yeah, so here's your please wait to be seated. You get a little cocktail. Got a champagne glass for please stand by. And then we have thanks for coming, which is a little margarita glass. Oh, so something I realized I didn't use actually are your really cool logo assets. My original idea here when I first saw it was that it could be like a stamp on a napkin, but uh, we don't really have a napkin going on here. So I'll see, I'll just throw it in. We'll see what happens, okay. 
Let's see, Wing Yui asks, is there a good way to attribute the creators if you use their assets for stream layouts? Yeah, so here's what I did. First of all, if you, it's pretty affordable, right? So it, let's say you're only using like a few of these. This is only $3 for the royalty free license and you can just continue to use it without attribution. So if the attribution becomes a headache, honestly, I think $3 is worth not having to constantly be like, oh, okay, and this thing is by like, Juraj, oh, I'm super saying that wrong. I'm sorry, whoever you are. But like, if that is becoming a problem, I personally think paying $3 is probably worth it. This is what I did. So I, I try to have a little attribution text on the top left or the bottom right somewhere. So for my karaoke stream, I used a background from some made by this Twitter user, right? So just leaving a little text note somewhere in the corner. Uh, doesn't have to be the most readable thing, just as long as it's like, you're reasonably like putting in an effort to attribute your your sources. I think that's, it's the, it's the thought and the effort that counts, so. <laughs> Okay, today we made Meeps' layout. This is Meeps' overlay for content streaming. Here's the chat focused overlay. Here's a be back soon, soon screen. This is still in progress. We're gonna work on this banner a bit. I don't super know where to put that. Um, and then here are Zal's waiting screens and thank you screens. Yeah, we have a few variations just to have options. I hope everyone appreciates G Slides more, or honestly, PowerPoint can do even more, right? Like it has even more functionality. So if you wanna up level it from G Slides, give PowerPoint a shot. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, there we go. Perfect, the perfect screen for it. Thank you for coming. Um, I hope this was informative and helpful for people. I will have an edited VOD, uh, including all of the steps that we wrote out together, as well as the resources list that I shared. <laughs>